What's up and welcome to Sam Miller Science where you're joining me just over a decade into my personal journey of working to bridge the gap between metabolism, macros, muscle, and medicine, all while helping coaches scale the impact that they desire and deserve. If you are here, thank you so much for listening and for trusting me to help you elevate your coaching game or to lead you in your transformation to realize your true potential. In either case, each week I'll be sharing my methods, models, and message to serve as leverage for your specific goals. Without further ado, let's get on to today's show. Welcome back to Sam Miller Science. In today's episode, Episode, we're going to be talking about reasons you might be struggling with your digestion and struggling with your gut health that go beyond the food log or go beyond your nutrition because it's common sense that obviously what we eat impacts what we're seeing in terms of our uh, bloating or indigestion or gas or even our bowel movements but oftentimes people forget to look at other areas of their life and even their you know meal by meal decision making and context of the meals that they're eating and so today I want to dive into that as well as some training and lifestyle related factors that really can go a long way in impacting your digestion and your gut health. So I've got five key reasons for you today. Also, this episode is brought to you by the cold that I'm currently getting over. Uh, so bear, bear with me, guys. I did have enough of a voice where I wanted to make sure that I continue to create some content for you and talking about this key topic because I see it coming up very, very frequently. But I think we've gotten to a point where I can get all the way through the episode without it sounding too, too bad for you guys. So I want to make sure uh, that I touch on these five key concepts so you can begin applying them either in your own journey or with the clients that you work with. If you are interested in learning more about gut health, I do have a four-part series from March of 2022 on my podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify that dives into different factors related to gut health, whether it be uh, the concept of dysbiosis, intestinal permeability, digestive enzyme insufficiency, and a lot of different factors that play into someone uh, struggling with their gut and overall digestion. So today, starting off with reason number one out of my five key reasons that you may be struggling with your gut and digestion beyond nutrition is going to be not chewing your food and having rushed eating. So this basically means thinking about inattentive eating when you're just trying to kind of shovel that food down or you're eating very, very quickly. Digestion begins in the mouth. And this is both with your teeth and also uh, we actually have enzymes in our saliva that help to break down this food as well. So when we're extra rushed and we're not taking the time we need to to chew our food, this is going to impact what's going on in terms of how we feel after that meal. And then in addition to that, we have to consider, um, you know, even what's going on in terms of our digestion days later could be starting at that actual uh, meal time. So a lot of folks don't think about that. They just kind of rush, get that food down, especially for folks who are trying to build muscle and eat more food. I see that all the time inside our industry. Reason number two is going to be your actual environment during the meal. So there's a big difference between sitting down and having maybe a social gathering and eating some food or being with family or maybe even eating just a nice quiet dinner by yourself versus uh, you know rushing food in the after school pickup line when you're grabbing your kids uh, at the end of the day or potentially you know, being in a high stress environment and consuming a meal or eating your food while watching TV versus uh, maybe you have your plate in front of you and it's very focused, attentive eating, mindful eating. That's also going to help with appetite management and satiety versus uh, inattentive eating where we're just kind of rushing through the meal. We're not even really paying attention to or enjoying the food that we're eating. So the environment matters. I consider this more to be like our meal context, right? So if you're in the car on the go, it's very different than sitting and enjoying your food uh, or preparing it in the kitchen at home is going to be different than let's say uh, you're kind of eating something in like a fast food pickup line, right? So the environment or context of the meal matters as well. And stress plays into this too, which is actually going to bring me to my third reason that you may be struggling with your digestion and your gut health is going to be chronic stress and or past trauma. So when we're dealing with chronic stress, this impacts what's called our HPA axis and can basically trigger this fight or flight response inside of our body. So when we're dealing with that fight or flight response, we're not in a parasympathetic rest or digest uh, state. So when you think about it, sympathetic is fight or flight or much more of a um, heightened sense of alertness. This is not optimal for digesting or digesting our food and having things like optimal bowel movements, right? So when we're in a state of chronic stress and trauma, it's a lot more common for people to struggle with certain digestive issues, whether it's from low stomach acid or they may have constipation. They may actually struggle with going more frequently or not having solid well-formed bowel movements. So when we're talking about 
uh, poor digestion, chronic stress, and past trauma is always going to play into that just because of the close connection between the gut and the nervous system. I do have past episodes on the gut brain, gut brain connection and other uh, key components when we begin to think about the stress relationship to the gut. Reason number four that we may be seeing problems with our gut health or an inability to improve digestive symptoms, and that's going to be training. So training or exercise in the right amounts is great. It's fantastic for our health. It's actually what's called hormesis. It is a positive stressor. It is a good thing. We adapt to it. We improve our body composition and our physique, ideally build some muscle along the way. But if you're having gut issues, we can enter a vicious cycle, especially if our training intensity, training volume, and training frequency is exceeding our recoverability. So when you have digestive issues, sometimes we need to back down on that training intensity and training volume because we're essentially in a place where we are not recovering from the training stimulus. And this is a vicious cycle when it comes to the gut because the hampered gut function and hampered gut issues lead to micronutrient uh, you know, issues or basically micronutrient deficiencies, which is then going to further uh, compound issues related to your training and your performance versus if you're in a place of optimal you know, health status, optimal nutrient status, you're going to have better training performance. You're just going to feel better. You're going to have better energy levels. Every, uh, you know, sort of reaction in your body, even something like thyroid function, for example, is going to be optimized when you have optimal micronutrient status. Now, when we're in a state of micronutrient deficiency, it just means we sort of have this subclinical level of a particular nutrient. It impacts our day-to-day -day function. So when you have gut issues, that's going to impact training performance and recoverability. But then, you know, also when you're training in excess of that recoverability, it's going to make the gut issues worse too, because we're sort of adding to our overall uh, stress burden and what our body is needing to recover from. So if you are struggling with your digestion and uh, with your gut health, definitely consider dialing back uh, the training intensity and training volume. This doesn't mean don't train. You still want to get your movement in. You still want to engage in healthy practices like going for a walk, exercise, maybe some cardiovascular exercise, resistance training. But if you are resistance training and you're someone who takes your resistance training to failure all the time, meaning every set or uh, maybe yeah, your last set of every single exercise, you're just going to want to dial that back, leave a few reps in reserve, or if you use an RPE scale or rated perceived exertion, we want to lower RPE to facilitate that improvement in digestion. And then once the gut is better, yeah, of course, push the training and do what you need to do. We need to move into more of a health oriented, health focused season to improve your gut health uh, before all of a sudden we are trying to set all of our PRs in the gym when it comes to our training. Our next one here is going to be number five. The fifth reason that your gut health could be compromised or you're struggling with your digestion is going to be poor sleep. So sleep we know helps to modulate inflammation in the body. It also can improve things like insulin sensitivity, but we often forget the importance of sleep in terms of our gut. So in terms of maintaining healthy digestion, and healthy circadian rhythm, we need to have optimal sleep. It's not uncommon that when people have uh, sleep interruptions or they're waking up early or they're going to bed late, it can change everything from bowel movement frequency to feelings like bloating or indigestion after their meals. And once again, just contributes to that overall state of stress that your body's experiencing. When we're dealing with issues related to the gut, our focus should be to actually pull down stress, especially you know things like from training, chronic stress in our environment, and how could we also reduce stress as improving our recovery, and sleep is one of our best ways to actually enhance recovery. So it would behoove us to get more sleep. I have a bonus reason for you guys if you've made it this far through the five reasons, just kind of wanted to add a little icing on the cake here, and this could be the timing of your movement or just movement in general. So obviously we mentioned some people uh, tend to push their training pretty hard, but there's also folks who are a little bit more sedentary, maybe not as active, and their issue is not moving enough. Or we have people who maybe get their movement, get their training in, but it's pretty far apart from their meals. So one thing that was found to be especially helpful in a 2021 study was people just going for post-meal walks. So in the study, they basically look at postprandial walks versus a prokinetic medication and the impact on the individual's digestion. And they found that the post-meal walks were actually very, very helpful for GI-related symptoms or people who are struggling with IBS-like 
complaints, which typically could fall into the realm of uh, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, indigestion. So it's kind of a broad umbrella term, but we know that walking can help to facilitate improvements in the gut overall. So movement is going to be our bonus consider consideration here and not necessarily just training as in resistance training and training to failure. We're thinking about movement and having the right dose of movement at the right times. So some folks notice that even a gentle morning walk or walking after their meals may help to alleviate symptoms related to constipation. If you're someone who runs a little bit more high stress, you're going more frequently, Walking is more of a parasympathetic activity, also helps put us into that rest and digest state, and maybe just reduce your overall stress load, which could be contributing to what you're seeing in terms of your gut symptoms. Now, obviously gut health issues can be varied, which is why I have a full four-part series on this. If you wanna check that out, I also created a workshop called Gut Health 101. You can learn more about that at samlerscience.com. At the time of recording this, in September 2023. That is still live on my website at sammillerscience.com. And if you're looking to dive in more and have hands-on education and mentorship related to nutrition topics, digestion, and also learning more about metabolism, you should check out my nutrition and metabolism specialization for health, fitness, and nutrition professionals. You can learn more about that at metabolismschool.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with someone who might benefit. It helps to continue the ripple effect of coaching that we do here. And if it weren't for our OG followers, followers and listeners, chances are you never would have found us in the first place. So do me a solid, pay it forward and share the show. I appreciate you guys tuning in today and I will talk to you in the next one.